Hello everyone. Um, welcome to my session about fast testing the ISO 15118 charging protocol stack. Um, first, I want to introduce myself. I am Tobias Schöneberger. I work at uh, research and development for innovative tool applications at Vector. And the focus of my team is testing of security, tooling for security testing and testing despite security. Personally, I have a passion for penetration, penetration testing and I've just got OSCP certified, so I can call myself a pen tester now. Um, what you can expect in the next few minutes is first an introduction to what fast testing is, then a quick overview of what ISO 15.11.8 is, and uh, then I will uh, look at one protocol at TLS to give you an example how we are fuzzing this charging communication. And in the end, I want to give a conclusion and an outlook. Let's get right into it. Fuzzing or well, fast testing is automated software testing. So we are testing software and we do this by providing invalid, unexpected or random data as input for our software. Sometimes this is also called monkey testing because imagine a monkey hacking away on a keyboard and uh, this is the input for your program. And uh, the target of this test is uh, to see whether your program is robust against invalid input. Um, sometimes uh, there's also the word fuzzing framework and as we understand fuzzing framework, we have here the monkey part, the fuzzer, which generates input, but we also need a component which monitors our system and a test for invalid behavior. So like a smoke detector, if it begins to smoke, it's bad. And we maybe found something. Um, next, I want to differentiate between functional testing and fuzzing and compare both approaches. Um, if we look here on the right, uh, when we look at functional tests, most of the functional tests are done in a valid space. So if program receives X, it should output Y and there's a manual test for this and uh, somebody has written this test. And most of the time, I think there are also some tests for a program receives X2 and shall not do something. So we have also some um, inputs in the invalid space, but uh, usually most of the test cases are testing the actual functionality of the system. If we would want to do this for ISO 15.11.8, you could buy, for example, from Vector, the CANU test package EV, which comes with um, conformance tests, which do basically this. Um, but uh, when we look at fuzzing, on the other hand, um, the fuzzer doesn't know about what's valid or invalid for a system. It just generates all input that is possible or input within the possible space. And because the input is generated, we can not only have like 10 tests or 100 tests, we can actually have as many tests as we want, as many as the time allows to execute. And we already see, okay, we have a lot more tests and uh, those tests also go beyond what, a, what maybe a tester would think is sensible for a system because it's just generated. You cannot only do one of these tests because uh, fuzzing does not guarantee that your software works and fuzzing um, can, for example, also not uh, test the security mechanism. Fuzzing will not tell whether encryption is a good encryption or not. This is something maybe functional tests can reveal, uh, but fuzzing tests the robustness of your system. So um, if your system does behave correctly after fuzzing, you can be a bit more sure that there's no easy way to crash your system, for example. That's the, the first word from the headline, fuzzing is explained, so let's go to charging communication. Um, ISO 15.11.8 is a standard for charging or for the communication between an electric car and the charging point. Um, uh, typically, uh, charging parameters are no negotiated, so how much power uh, does the car get from the, from the charging point? And uh, more, a newer feature is plug and charge, where the car can also authenticate against the charging point and the charging point then knows the car is allowed to charge. So no human has to walk up to the, to the NFC reader and put his chip there. You can just plug in and charge. Um, 
from a pen testing and security view, this uh, interface looks very interesting because it's an external interface of the car, not like the OBD connector in the car, it's externally. And um, I think it's easily, it, physical access is actually easy. Um, and if I put a charging point somewhere and write free electricity at the top, people will plug in their car into my malicious charging point. Um, so I think it's really important that um, the charging point is very robust against miscommunication from the outside because uh, as a hacker, this is really an easy target. And maybe I can even get the, the charging, so like the, the data of the car, which it uses to authenticate, and then I can charge my own car for free. So I also have monetary benefit as a hacker, everything I want. So we really have to protect this interface, I think. And um, the interface is complex um, because we have a, a, a whole stack of protocols on the interface. I want to start at the bottom. Uh, we have a physical interface, so it's power line communication, then IPv6, TCP, TLS. Then we have a transport protocol. Within this transport protocol, we have XML, which is encoded as XE. And in that, we then have the actual messages which transports, for example, the certificates for charging. Um, in our test suite, we support everything that's right here. Um, but because of the short time frame for this presentation, I want to focus just on one protocol. And I think TLS is maybe the one that was most interesting for us. Uh, and which I will present in the next slides. If we suppose we want to fast TLS, uh, we want to generate random TLS data, we of course need complete uh, control over the TCP payload, so we then can send every TLS thing we want. And that's always the case in fast testing. If you want uh, to fast V2G TP, you need full control over the TLS payload, but the handshake actually doesn't matter to you. The first point why TLS is interesting is it's complex. Um, because in uh, for the TLS handshakes, there are a lot of messages are exchanged between the server and the client. The car is the client in our test case here because uh, when the car is plugged in, um, it sends the first client hello and the charging point is the TLS server. Um, this is also what we, we first looked at uh, open source software, but there was no software which fulfilled our requirements of testing a client because there's lots, <clears throat> lots of server, uh, software to test a server, but uh, less software to test a client. Um, yeah, so we have this handshake and uh, we do here another form of fuzzing. We not only fuzz the content of these messages, but uh, we also fuzz the message order. So um, we have test cases, also all of them are generated, uh, where after we receive the client hello from our client, we immediately send a server hello done and uh, check what it does. So we skip a message and uh, see what the client does there and how the internal, whether the internal um, state machine of the client is robust, is tested there. Also, for our own benefit, uh, we, we try to hide away all these state machine transitions and have uh, very convenient methods now, which uh, we will also provide to our customers. Uh, we can just say, okay, do a handshake until um, maybe server hello done. Then the entire handshake is handled until server key exchange by our library. And then we can just set maybe one field in the server hello done and send that. And uh, this makes testing of TLS really a lot easier than it was beforehand for us. Uh, the next interesting and challenging part of fuzzing TLS is the data format itself. So um, if we look on the right, we, I've put a server hello message here and we can see it has many, many fields and um, a lot of them actually depend on each other. So we have a length, for example, here at the top, we have another length here, we have a length here, we have a length here, 
we have a length here. So lots of fields are depending on each other and uh, must be calculated correctly to get a valid packet, which uh, target will accept. And at the same time, there's of course large potential for fuzzing because as you can imagine, if these lengths don't match up, um, interesting things happen. Um, what we, we modeled all of these TLS messages for our fuzzer, so we can run our fuzzing and automatically generate test cases where first the uh, content type is changed, then the protocol version, then the length, then the handshake type. So we run through all of these fields with our fuzzing process and um, yeah, can make sure we, we really fill the input space for the test system with our fuzzing. Um, yeah, and one highlight also maybe is uh, we've modeled uh, fields with ha which have special values like the version. I mean, there's the version one, two, three uh, of TLS, and we have an enumeration for this one. So usually it tries the normal versions, but of course we send everything that is possible in the data format. So if we have one byte, we also send two fifty one dot two fifty one to make sure or to see what the target does if it receives something which is totally out of what normally comes up. Now, and if this protocol or this format is still too easy, there's a next level because in the TLS, we also exchange certificates so the client can verify whether the server uh, is, really, is who he really pretends to be. Um, and for certificates, we have a few manual test cases depicted here. And these are just examples. You could extend these to your test specifications. So we test whether not yet valid certificates or expired certificates still work. And uh, we do this by taking the correct format, uh, the correct certificate from the security manager. Uh, changing the date and resigning it with the security manager. Um, so the target sees the certificate is signed, but the content of the certificate then is wrong. Um, and uh, so we get a deep test basically. And what we've also created is a fuzzer for the certificate format itself. So this is an X509 certificate formatted as ASN1. So in ASN1, their format. And for this their format, we have a special fuzzer who fuzzes the, this. Uh, it's also a kind of a type length value format. And uh, we have can fuzz all these length and type fields and see whether the parser for certificates is also robust. And then uh, we have a third challenge uh, in TLS testing and that is it's, uh, actual cryptography. Uh, it begins already when you um, establish a TLS connection that you can't see what's inside and it's difficult to debug. And uh, here Canoo helps us because in Canoo you can set a master secret. Our library automatically uses the calculated master secret, sets it into the Canoo variable and afterwards we can see the exchange TLS application messages in clear text. And what's important for our TLS uh, fast testing is also we can read alerts and um, check whether it, the correct alert was received from our test. And uh, there's more crypto. We have all these secrets, hashes, and nonces. And um, yeah, we hit as much as possible in our library. So we usually don't have to care about when we use our library, but also if our test suite is used by somebody else, uh, they also don't have to care about it. Um, yeah. One challenge was usually the motto is never roll your own crypto, but in this case, we needed our own crypto because we really want to access all fields and every Mac and typically libraries begin to resend our um, input if we say, okay, sign this, and the library says, no, it's invalid. Uh, and that was the part where we said, okay, then we sign it ourselves. Um, we also have support, of course, for elliptic curve. Um, uh, elliptic curve as algorithms in the handshake uh, and client authentication. What also makes life easier is uh, 
the handling of certificates is done in the security manager. So you don't have to provide files uh, in a special format or something, uh, just the name, how it is in the security manager, and then our tool will get it from there. Next, I want to show how such a fast TLS fuzzing test case could look like. Um, every test case has basically three phases. First, there's a preparation where the target is brought into a state where it's ready to receive a fast message. Next, the fast message is sent and generated. And lastly, the uh, behavior of the target is observed to see whether it misbehaves. Let's go through the phases. Um, first, if we think about such uh, charging communication, we maybe want to reset our our system under test, so we we set it and uh, we simulate a nice environment with our ECUs for it, and um, then we simulate that the uh, plug is plugged in, and um, then the system under test will start to initiate uh, a TCP handshake with us, and our fuzzer waits until it receives the client hello from our system under test. This is then. Uh, the preparation stage is then done, and we go to the simulation, stimulation, sorry. Um, so we create a fast message. In this example, it's a server hello, um, and the session ID length is manipulated. So this is usually a 32-byte field, and uh, it also has a length field where it says how long the field is, and we don't change the actual length of the array, we just change the uh, content of the length field. So we actually send a wrong length, and this is then parsed by the system under test. And maybe you can imagine if there's a mem copy reading this, or if a pointer is advanced by this length, which then not matches the actual length of the packet, bad things could happen. Um, if no bad things happen and our system under test is very robust, it will just provide a TLS alert. And this again, we can check on our test side and say, okay, we expect an alert for this input. And um, if the system under test sends an alert, it gets a green check mark. Another way of testing the system under test, for example, if it just doesn't answer with anything, we are still not sure whether it passed the thing or it just ignored it or whatever happened. Uh, we can also uh, do a more um, uh, a check for a more critical error. So we just ping it. And if it doesn't answer, maybe something worse happened. Or if we, for example, have a reset counter uh, and see, okay, it, it has reset, then uh, something bad happened. And we can report that. Um, so this is how all of the fast test cases work. And this is also how they work for, for other protocols. Always first prepare, simulate, and then observe. To give you a conclusion, what uh, our test suite for ISO 15.11.8 can do, uh, it can fast all protocol layers. Um, we also have additional security tests in there. For example, we can check whether it accepts a null cipher. Um, it's well tested, uh, it's well integrated into VTest Studio and Canoe, and um, therefore it can be used with real cars in a setup like this, but it can also be used against simulated ECU as a virtual target. Um, and of course, you can also use our test suite as, as base for your own tests and extend it with C Sharp or Couple code. Um, and this test suite is we've we've created it initially for for this charging communication, but of course the protocols can be used also in other places, or the fuzzers for the protocols can be used in other places. Um, we also use the TLS fuzzer to test uh, diagnostic communication of IP. And what's interesting there, the roles are actually reversed because the car is in the server and our TLS test is then a client but this also works well. Um, or you can maybe connect, uh, test HTTP as connections to the car or from the car into the backend. And um, that's all. I hope this was interesting to you and uh, I am open for questions now.